all right hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel so in this video we'll look at the concept of stationary points of functions so which we, uh, we have uh, about three uh, types of stationary point we have what we call the maximum point which we can call the maxima then the minimum point and then we have what we call the inflation point how you will identify a stationary point is that if you draw a tangent at that particular point of the curve that tangent is going to be parallel to the x-axis of your graph so you see that if you draw a tangent here for instance something like this this one now is called the inflection point okay so the maximum point is the highest point above the x-axis the minimum point is the lowest point below the x-axis why the inflection point you can see the difference between the maximum and inflation point is that at the maximum point the graph of the function rises and then it comes down after the maximum point but at the inflation point what happens is that it goes as if it wants to come down then it continues going up again and then in the process of that it would have created a point of rest so a flat point here like what we have here so and this is what we call the inflation point okay so the point x1 is the maximum point that's the x value why the x2 here is the, the the minimum point and then the x3 here is the inflation point and so if you get the y value of this x1 which is this point here if you get this value here y1 it is now called the maximum value why the value of y here if you trace it to the y axis is called the minimum value and then the other one is called the inflation value so if you put these three together you now have what we call the stationary values so we have the stationary point and the stationary values okay so in other words the maximum value is actually equal to that is since y is equal to f of x then the maximum value is equal to f of x1 using this example here why your minimum value is f of x2 that means if you get your maximum point and you want to get the maximum value just substitute the maximum point into the formula for in, into the y value uh, function whatever you get is your maximum value so when you are given a function how do you identify that uh, the the stationary point now you can see like here i said that the stationary point is the point where the tangent line is parallel to the x-axis and if it is parallel the meaning is that if you take the derivative you are actually going to get what zero and so your derivative is going to be equal to zero so to know the the stationary point of a given function let's assume y equal to f of x all you need to do is to take the first derivative of that function equate it to zero and then solve what va whatever values of x you get is your stationary point and then the other aspect is how do we now know which of the stationary point assuming we have more than one stationary point which one is the maximum value which one is the minimum and which one is the inflection point okay so to know the maximum value or which or to determine the nature of the stationary point you have to take the derivative two times so you need to take a double derivative of your f and when you do that for the first part if you uh, if you now do a substitution of whatever stationary point you have gotten and you get a value that is less than zero then that particular x is a maximum point but if you do your substitution into your double derivative and then you get a value that is greater than zero then that x is a minimum value the x itself is a minimum value but if after you have done your substitution and you are getting a value that is exactly equal to zero then we call that the inflection point look at this example it says that we should find the stationary point of the function given all right so we would have to take the derivative and if we differentiate this we are going to have that uh, y the y the x is going to be 
course, derivative of this is 12x squared. The derivative of this is 30x, and this is going to give us minus 18. All right, so if we equate this to 0, we are going to have, and to solve for, uh, the first thing to note here is that we have a common value, so we can bring out 6, or just divide through by 6. If you do that, you are going to have 2x squared, Okay, so we can then solve this quadratically to get the values of our x. And if we do that, we are going to have, so from here we will now have that our x is equal to 1 all over 2, or our x, if you equate this one to 0, you will get minus 3. Alright, so now we have gotten the two stationary points of the function we are given. And that's what they ask us to do. So, but assuming they want us to now find the nature of this stationary point, all you need to do is to differentiate this again. And if you differentiate it again, it is written this way, d squared y dx squared. And if you do that, you are going to have, if we differentiate this, we'll get 24x. And if we differentiate this, we'll get 30. Okay, so at this point, we'll just substitute the two values. If you put half here, that's your x as half here. You are going to have, and this is going to give you 12 plus 30, which is 42. And 42 is greater than 0. So what it means is that x equal to half is a minimum point. And then if you check the second part, what are you going to have? If you put your x as uh, minus 3 here, you are definitely going to have a negative value. This is going to give you 72 plus this, which is negative 42 also. And this one now is less than 0. So what it means is that uh, x equal to minus 3 is a maximum value. Sorry, it's a maximum point. And so if you substitute this value now into this function, you are, whatever you get is your maximum value. And if you substitute half into this function, whatever you get is your minimum value. All right, so we look at the next example. This one says we should determine the nature of this, just like what I just finished doing now. So you first of all solve for the stationary point and then try to find the nature. Okay, so let's first of all find the stationary point by differentiating. So if we differentiate y now, so if we equate this to 0 and solve for x, we are going to have... And if we solve this, it means that either this is 0 or this one is 0. And that is going to give our x as a positive 5 all over 3 or minus 1. Okay, so to determine the nature of each of the stationary points, remember all of these two are actually stationary points. So we need to know the nature. That's what the question is saying. So to know the nature, we differentiate this again. And so if we differentiate this, we are going to have the squared y all over the x squared and that's going to give us 6x if you differentiate this and then if you differentiate this you are going to have minus 2 so we substitute into it and so if we substitute for x equal to 5 over 3 we are going to have 6 into 5 over 3 then minus 2 and so that's going to give us uh, this is going to cancel this to give to 2 times 5 is 10. 10 minus 2 is 8. And that is strictly greater than 0. And so that means this point is a minimum point. For x equal to minus 1, if you put it here, you are going to have 6 times 1 minus 2. Sorry, minus 1. 6 times minus 1 minus 2. And that is minus 8, which is less than 0. Therefore, our x equal to minus 1 is a maximum point. And finally, let's look at the next example here. It says that we should determine the values of a and b for which this equation here or this function here will have a stationary point x minus 1 and x uh, equal to 3. So what are we going to do? First of all, we differentiate that function there. And uh, that's going to give us f prime of x, which is equal to 3x squared 
if you differentiate ax squared you will get 2ax and then if you differentiate bx you will get b okay so if we equate this to zero uh, what it means is that if we solve this quadratic equation we are supposed to get the stationary point x equal to minus 1 and x equal to 3. So the meaning is that if we substitute x as minus 1 into this equation, we should get 0. And so if we do that, so what it means is that for x equal to minus 1, we are going to have, so and this is minus, so this is going to give us minus 2a plus b is equal to i want to take this this is going to be three take it to the other side so you have minus three here you can call this equation one and then when you substitute your x as three what you are going to have here is going to be plus b should be equal to zero since it's going to be a stationary point and so this is going to give us nine times this is 27 and this will be 6a plus b is equal to 0 and so if you take 27 to the other side you have 6a and that is equation 2 and so if we solve the two equations simultaneously we are going to have so if we use elimination method that is going to give us this uh, minus this is going to be minus 8a then b minus b will go away the minus 3 minus minus 27 is going to become positive 24. <clears throat> and so if we divide both sides by minus 8, our a is going to be equal to minus 3. So our a is minus 3. And so what's going to be the value of b? So just substitute a into any of the equations. Let's put it into equation 1. And so if we put a into equation 1, we'll have 2 times minus 3 plus b is equal to minus 3 and so this is going to give us plus 6 plus b is equal to minus 3 therefore our b is equal to minus 3 minus 6 which will give us what minus 9 so our the value of a is minus 3 and the value of b is minus 9 for this function to give you the stationary point it means that the function itself should actually be x f of x is equal to s cubed minus our a is minus 3 so you have minus 3x squared then our b is minus 9 and so you have minus 9 so this is the function that will give these two stationary points and they ask us to determine the type of stationary points they are and i will allow you to do that so kindly follow the process i have done earlier on to check the type of stationary points we have here look at the stationary point x equal to one minus one and then x equal to three all right that's where we'll end it for this video please kindly subscribe to our youtube channel uh, we'll see you in our next video bye